the whole thing last week with um, Justin, his son, and Meek Mill. And there was someone else who was replying to it. Was it Low Key? Low yeah, Key yeah. Um, and 50 Cent, all of them on Twitter going back and forth. Diddy having his son defend him in this time is bizarre. Is insane to me. And so I think all these things put together, this is really a movie. Like the, the, Diddy <laughs> yeah, is this is documentary no, shit. Like Diddy is really that like big bad movie villain mm-hmm. who has panic over the world and will stop at nothing. Welcome back, people. This is Soundbites, the part of the album mode podcast where we're talking about the music, the culture, and the internet and how those three things intertwine. I would say, and also the legal issues now, I guess, because we've been doing legal issues for the past like four weeks. Yeah, all 2024, basically. <laughs> so the music, the culture, the internet, and the legal, and how those three, four things intertwine to create the music culture that we have today. My name is Damar Grant, aka King Grant, aka the bunny and i'm here with my esteemed co-host co-creator adro smiley aka adro smiley.com aka adro smiley official aka the godfather and we're joined by patient zero agent zero chris our producer adro we're here on sound bites you know if this didn't happen on the weekend we actually just wouldn't be doing a sound bites today i don't think yeah it's been a quieter quieter week luckily it well it would have been a quieter week luckily but instead, we have Diddy, a.k.a. P. Diddy, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. Puff, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, a.k.a. Puffy, is on Twitter. And we saw this, I want to say, the mo- one of the more sickening videos I've ever seen Agreed. in my entire life, like genuinely. Like I was talking to a family member at a barbecue this weekend. And the best word I could come up with was sickening. So... W- Tell us what happened in this video for the people who did didn't or count themselves lucky enough not to see this video. Yeah, they are in a hotel and Who's they? Diddy and Cassie are in a hotel yeah. and Diddy with his towel around his waist chases Cassie down mm-hmm. and she's clearly trying to get away. Yeah, she's trying to get her way to an elevator. She punches punches the down on the elevator. She has like a couple things with her. Yes. And then and the he, security footage of Diddy. He eventually catches her and basically assaults her at the elevator, kicks her like a dog, mm-hmm. pushes her down. And the report was that she had a black eye um, from something he did before. And and I, I feel like if you can avoid seeing this, I would urge you to avoid seeing this. Yeah. Something that I, I don't think I'm going to ever forget. But the first thing that came to mind when I saw that video is an actual experience that I went through. And so I'm going to take you guys on something that happened to me mm-hmm. a little while ago and kind of inform how I thought about this. Now, this was in November. It was Halloween haunt. I was at Canada's Wonderland. Mm-hmm. And as, you know, me and my day are leaving, a man is yelling at this woman. And mm-hmm. it is in such a way that you're just like, this is not right. Mm-hmm. And so a few of us stop, and it's me and a couple other men, and we kind of slow down and take a look at him and see, kind of see what's going on. Eventually, I walk up to him, and I basically try and break it up. And Mm -hmm. I say, is there a problem here? Do I need to step in? And the woman is kind of defending him, Mm -hmm. but you can tell that it's obviously not right. And so I break it up. They kind of scurry off, and I let security know to to keep an eye out on them. Mm -hmm. And... I didn't feel great about that afterwards because seeing how he was behaving at Canada's motherfucking Wonderland, Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what he's doing behind closed doors. And that's what I thought about with this, is this is in a hotel lobby. Yeah. And I I think beforehand, the few people that were defending Diddy was on this kind of lack of evidence and, oh, human trafficking is so aggressive and we don't know that it's that. And in this video, you see the audacity of how untouchable he felt. Yeah, And so I think that this video, I already thought he was guilty of every single thing that he's been accused (laughs) of. I didn't need this video. But I think when you see this video, without even any audio, you can tell that he feels untouchable. Yeah. Running through the lobby with with just a towel. That's the craziest part to me. I mean, obviously, this is all Mm -hmm. insane sequence. But the fact that... The fact that he, like, thought that he could just... First of all, run outside in the towel. Nobody, nobody cares. Mm-hmm. No, he doesn't care. And then also, to, that's actually you know you're in you're in a towel. That's actually extremely vulnerable. 
That's what I'm saying. You're extremely vulnerable. You're basically naked. And he was like, actually, I'm about to just like go, j- like, what is there? His girlfriend or fiance? I don't even know what the yeah. relation that was at that time. Basically going to go jump her at the elevator. She's not getting out of here. Also, Insane. in a hotel where there's cameras. And he's just, he's just, I'm, he's just out here. He just felt like he could do that. That, that, that part, like that audacity is, is insane to me. And so I, I'm, I'm, why I brought that up and brought up my story is attach that audacity to everything you hear about this case going forward. Mm-hmm. And I think that we're, we're, we're almost being like, no, there's no, not we, but people are saying there's no way. And I think he feels untouchable. The, the video ends with him dragging her and her trying to get away another time mm-hmm. and him dragging her again. And so how untouchable do you have to feel to drag someone in the lobby? Yeah. So, again, everything we're hearing when it feels like it's, like, it's too much or that's not possible or that's a lot. No. He felt like he couldn't be stopped, and so he did all these things. Mm -hmm. Perez Hilton came out and said that Diddy paid $50,000 to the hotel to get that video taken down or to get um, a copy of the video. And I have two questions. That hotel, someone got to, you know, speak to them. I feel like they have to be has faced some kind of... Yeah, so you have to be held accountable in some, yeah, some sort yeah, I, of way. I think that's, that's one. Two, is it more sick that he got it removed that he still has this video? For him to still have this video mm-hmm. is like, that's another level of crazy, twisted, disgusting to me. Yeah. That it's like, and that to me is I'm like, I, I think we have to really realize the kind of monster that Diddy is. I know we've been seeing on this show mm-hmm. for months, but I think... For someone to have that video still, like that to me is like, what is the reason for having that video still? Mm-hmm. So when you think about the fact that he paid to get it taken down and then still has a video all these years later, yeah, that's sickening. Yeah, that's next level craziness. And I think that um, Diddy is, sorry. Bless you. Thanks. I think it's next level craziness. And I think that Diddy just, I think this just, for people that, um, I guess for people that needed some sort of proof, some sort of visible proof, some sort of yeah. something to be like, to allow them to see or understand Diddy in a, a villainous light, mm-hmm. which I would consider this villainous. Big villainous. Right? That's probably the best way I can describe it now. Not even sickening. It's like villainous, bro. Um, to see him in this light. I guess this is what they needed. You know, this is kind of like crazy. It's kind of like an Aaron Hernandez type or even I'm trying to think of like other other scenarios where like people hear about an incident happening. Mm-hmm. Um, what's that? What's the last that guy? Something Rice. Oh, um, Ray Rice. Ray Rice. Yeah. Right. So people hear about an incident happening. Right. But then mm. you see the video and your stomach churns. Right, your stomach churns. You mm-hmm. don't want to watch it. You then the gravity of the situation that we were talking about becomes much more real because yeah, you're not you ignore it. You can't ignore it because you're seeing it with your own two. Because now you're seeing it with your own two eyes. Yeah, it's not just a word of mouth. It's not on a written document. Mm-hmm. You are seeing the actual event, right? And I think for those people who were not able to understand, I'm saying mm-hmm. understand that Diddy could be like this. Um. The only way you cannot see him in that light now is if you mm. pluck out your two eyes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the only way. <laughs> that's the only way. I'm I'm happy that this video surfaced for those people. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a group of people, not even in hip hop, just in general. When you idolize someone, you think someone is the shit. It's hard to see them in a in a bad light, and I think especially in in the black hip hop community, we idolize wealth so much mm-hmm. over character. Where it's like, oh. He has money. He makes money. He's good. He's good. And someone I thought about with this is Kendrick Lamar. Because Kendrick Lamar has the allegations against him. As time goes on, I'm seeing everyone's just like, nope, he's too good to have done this. Mm -hmm. There's no way he's done that. And I don't know we're going to ever see a video like this from Kendrick Lamar. I don't know he's done anything like this. But watching this video, I was like, I don't think Kendrick is incapable of this because he made Pimp Butterfly. Yeah. That, That, you know. Diddy, Diddy making I'll Be Missing You didn't stop him from doing this. Mm-hmm. And so that's something I think of with other artists and allegations, I think, towards him where it's like, we have to stop doing this like, like, like we know these people and say, Kendrick, 
No. He would never. Yeah. And, and I, I say that because for the media members who have been defending Diddy, still not okay. But when it's someone you know personally, I, I understand that a bit more. Even in my time in the music industry, I've known people who my relationship with them is great. Mm-hmm. But I have heard things that are not great. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not going to discredit those things that I haven't experienced. But my experience is this over here. Mm-hmm. So I understand that juxtaposition of, listen, I only know the good Diddy. I don't know this Diddy. Mm-hmm. But I think you have to separate the two and say, just because I don't know that, that man doesn't mean that man doesn't exist. Facts. And I think that's what a lot of media members had a hard time coming to grips with because they've never seen that person. And so I think this, to me, is like, think of how, how open and public this was. Like, this, yeah. wa- this wasn't a matter of, like, I thought no one would see. Like, someone could have came out of the elevator. Yeah, facts. Somebody could have came out. Yeah, you're so right. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> so it's like, you not seeing this is almost a matter of, like, happenstance in a sense. Mm-hmm. And that there are probably people around him who have seen stuff like this all the time. Yeah. And so I hope that this can change that dynamic of people who are like, did he? Like, he's all about love. He yeah. Would... I hope that we can get Brother rid of- Brother Love. Wasn't his name Brother Love? Brother Love. Yeah, that last album was called Love as well. So Stupid. I hope we can get rid of that mindset. And deciding that someone is too good to do this. Because I think that we had no problem just deciding Drake was a pedophile yeah. without any any proof. Mm-hmm. And I want us to do the same for that with all these people who they may seem good perception wise, but your perception as an artist, as a celebrity, and who you are mm-hmm. are two very different things. Right. So then, so that happened yep. this week this weekend, or maybe even earlier in the week. And then we get this response video from Diddy, P. Diddy, Puffy, Puff, Puff Daddy, fuck, Sean Diddy Combs. Mm -hmm. Saying that, I mean, he gave you, us, the viewers. Yes. He gave the literally, like, textbook PR, um, like, whatever, whatever that sheet of paper it is that your PR team gives you to Mm. to apologize. Basically read that shit bullet point for bullet point. Right? It was worse than the regular PR shit, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, I honestly, over the weekend, I compared it to Travis Scott's apology. Like, wow, that's, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that, was, that was bad. Yeah, it's, it's up there with that. And, and I think that, like, the apology at this time mm-hmm. is so distasteful. Yeah, it honestly is. Because, like, what are you apologizing for? You, there's years of shit happening. And only, it, it's only because people saw the video. It's not because you genuinely mm-hmm. feel any sorrow or you repented in some yeah. sort of way or you you found yourself, you went no. into a mountain and came back. You know, like nothing like that. It's literally only mm-hmm. because the video became visible to other people. That's the only reason. And I think about two people in the situation. One is um, R.I.P. Tory Lanez. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> it's Tory Lanez. It's because I think that there was a bunch of people saying... He's innocent. He didn't do it. Um, and based off of his actions of, oh, he, he doesn't seem guilty. Mm-hmm. And I think about Diddy putting out that statement when, when the first Cassie lawsuit came out, saying that he's did nothing wrong. He's going to fight for his rights. And I've realized now, these men saying they did nothing wrong means nothing. Yeah. Like, Diddy is super wrong. This is not like a misunderstanding. <laughs> yeah. this, he's like... That is as wrong as it gets. Yeah. And so to think that this man knows he did that and still said, put out the statement. I did nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. That's the person we're dealing with. That's, that's one. And then two, the whole thing last week with um, Justin, his son, and Meek Mill. And there was someone else who was replying to it. Was it Loki? Loki yeah, yeah. Um, and 50 Cent, all of them on Twitter going back and forth. Did he having his son defend him in this time? Is bizarre. Is insane to me. And so I think all these things put together, this is really a movie. Like, the, the, Diddy <laughs> yeah, is, this is documentary no, shit. Like, Diddy is really that, like, big, bad movie villain mm-hmm. who has panic over the world and will stop at nothing. Yeah, but you know what's even more bizarre about this situation with his son? Mm-hmm. It's either one of two things. Is the son is so naive and mm-hmm. so, like, forgiving or so, like, just your brain is not working properly where you're like, I'm going to defend my father in this situation that you know mm-hmm. is happening. Yeah. Or he knew it was happening and uh, was okay with what was happening. I, I think it's the second one. And I'll, because... tell you, I'll tell you why I think that. Because I think that what I said before about the black community idolizing wealth mm-hmm. and it's like, you have money, do whatever you want. 
I think that his son fits into that group where it's like, my dad is the richest person I know. So yeah. he must not be that bad, even if he's doing these things. Mm -hmm. And I think it's contagious where the people around him are probably treating his dad with that adulation where it's like, okay, your dad is this great. Like I can't even look at him mm -hmm. in that other light. So I, I think it's, it's a bit of, he knew for sure. And I think the environment that he's in it's probably not conducive to him kind of realizing the truth and speaking on it. Facts, yeah. Also, you know, when you're a son or a daughter of a multimillionaire, or maybe even billionaire, mm -hmm. Diddy's probably in a B-Cal yeah, category now. It's hard to escape the, their grips mm -hmm. in any way, you know? Like, you have to, you would have to move to a remote island and cut all communications to escape somebody like Diddy, right? Because Diddy, there's no uh, flight he can't catch to any location. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. there's no person that he can't uh, um, bribe, bribe. There's no yeah. there's no vehicle that cannot be exploded. <laughs> no vehicle safe. <laughs> right. So there is there is always something within his grips mm -hmm. if you're related to him or if he just wants you in orbit. Yeah. Right. Think about people like Usher or Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's also that. So I'm not absolving his son at mm -hmm. all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Zero percent. But I just I'm thinking about just like the contextual um, relation between mm -hmm. his son and his and his dad. Even if he was totally a thousand percent against his dad, um, kind of impossible to escape the the grip of P Diddy in oh, that sense. Oh, there's no way. There's yeah. no way. The other thing about this is the older generation who grew up with Diddy. Like we've Diddy, we didn't grow up with Diddy. He mm -hmm. was just always around. By the time we were conscious to what was going on, he was already Diddy. Yeah. And I think that some of them are dead, though. Tupac and Biggie are dead. But I, I mean, the the fans, the oh, fans, yeah. civilians who they saw Diddy go from intern to billionaire. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's like a certain, like I think we we've grown up with that kind of being normal in a sense, where we've known about Jay Z, Diddy, Dr. Dre, all these guys having money. Yeah, that we kind of it's easier for us to separate that and say that doesn't give you the right. But when People who grew up with hip hop from the '80s to the '90s, where the best rappers weren't necessarily rich, like Rakim is not a gazillionaire. Yeah, you know it didn't. It doesn't add up as if you're great, you're rich. You know, KRS One talks a lot about at the beginning of his career being homeless, mm -hmm. and so Diddy was part of hip hop becoming a money maker. Yeah, the commercialization in a real, real way. And so I think that that is something that the older generation who's working in hip hop right now has to really come to grips with and like slowly be like, okay. He really was this guy this whole time. When he gave me this opportunity, he still was that guy. Yeah. When he helped me get this job, he still was that guy. I think that's hard for them. And I'm going to bring it back to Kendrick. Kendrick is a version of that for this generation, just from a morality standpoint, what he stands for. Mm -hmm. Standing for blackness, standing for morals, standing for family. And I think that this, all these artists, these celebrities, these figures have a hold on us in some way. And I think that this is a lesson for all of us to this let it go. We don't know these people. We don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. And I think that none of us can say he would never, because history has shown us that they he will. would. Yeah. <laughs> that he would. And and I said this before, like so many of the leaders of our culture being the ones, you know, um, there was a joke made that someone said, Why is it always the greatest artists of all time who are doing the nasty stuff? Yeah. They're like, if Malcolm Moore raped someone, I wouldn't care. Mm -hmm. And I, but their stature, mm -hmm. their wealth, and their social status uh, gives them, in their mind, leeway to do things like this. And that, and that's a part of it that I, that I think that I'm. I want everyone to to bring in when you when you see someone who's popular and you think they couldn't do this. Like, I think of it the other way as the more power they have, the more they're doing it. Yes, it's not. I'm thinking, oh, Kendrick Lamar is so good, he's so great, he would never. It's. Y'all, it's harder for y'all to find out because he has all this money and power. Mm -hmm. It's not that Drake doesn't have to do this. He's such a great artist. No. His power gives him opportunity to abuse his power. Exactly. And so I think that's th this is a lesson for everyone in music and hip hop as a fan. Because I saw a lot of people having just a reaction to this that I was like, this is disturbing to watch. Mm -hmm. But I I just don't like that you needed this to Yeah, this had to be the Cassie thing. Because yeah. if if you read her a lawsuit there's worse shit than this in the lawsuit yeah way worse way and worse. this is in the lawsuit too and other people that saw it happening to her and other people 
And so, so yeah, so it's like that's the, the the attitude I want us to have where we can see that okay, the more power is the more chance for corruption. I agree. So it's it's very it's a very sad time in hip hop right now, very sad time in music. Yeah. But I want justice to be served because this this pattern of the top guys being accused of things like this, Dr. Dre, Tupac, Diddy, Drake, yeah. Kendrick. I, I don't I don't want this to continue. Like J. Cole being the outlier of like I know he's se- chilling. Seeming to be wholesome. He's at the beach. Like I want that to be the norm. Huh? You know, I, I think that J. Cole is an incredible artist in his own right. What he stands for is great, but I would love there to be more J. Cole's where we can say there's a whole group of artists who we feel like are like someone like Vince Staples. If Vince Staples uh, did something, yeah, we would all be like, what the actual fuck? Yeah. And I, I would love for it to be in a place where we're not assuming that all these guys have a chance mm-hmm. of being nasty in some way. Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, the sad day in hip hop, I do think, and I think I said this in a previous episode, but mm-hmm. I do think we're going through a Me Too moment yeah. in hip hop. Uh, I think it's not being broadcast in the way of this is a Me Too mm-hmm. moment just because when it was when Me Too initially happened was mm-hmm. years ago. But also, this is like black people in the music industry. So even as it's happening, mm-hmm. everybody is kind of maneuvering to a- avoid it in a way, it seems like. You don't see people shouting from the mountaintops about Diddy, what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, things with, you know, uh, things with the Drake thing was like, it had to be uncovered. It was people were talking about it on the interwebs. Mm-hmm. But in a general discourse... We weren't talking about that. Mm-hmm. So everybody, it seems, uh, when it gets to a large enough scale, everybody's trying to maneuver. They're trying to do one of these just to get out of the way. They like they know it's happening, but just like, you know, let me. Yeah, no one, no one wants to be the one. I, I yeah. think, I, I, and I, I hope that this video is the start of that changing. Me too. Because I, I saw a billboard at Young and Dundas mm-hmm. for Trey songs live at Rebel. Wow. And I said, look at the world we're living in, <laughs> like. You know, so it's like seeing stuff like that is just like, yeah. Where 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 are we at? Where I'm still waiting for people to start talking about Tyga and uh, Kylie Jenner. That's not gonna happen. Uh, I did... in, in in the in the moment, people brought it up and it was cool. Like th- yeah. if, if you watch old interviews from that time, they're crazy to watch because people bring it up to him mm-hmm. and then say, "I understand. I get you. She's fly." That's craziness. Insane. So I I don't think that one's gonna. That's, gonna, not, that's not happening. That's, I'm, I don't gonna, think, I'm I, just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there. I, I'm gonna be the person that puts out that the the the, the Tyga and Kylie Jenner Jenner thing. The, that is Di, that's Diddy and Aaliyah, right? The, or, not Diddy. Uh, Cassie, R, R. Kelly, and Aaliyah. And, that's, and Aaliyah. It's the same shit. I, I, it's, is that not the same shit? No, it is the same shit. But here's what I say. I say we got We have other people who are higher on the okay. list. I th- I think we got to put Trey Songs up there. Yeah. And Dr. Dre, like Dr. Dre's. Line being called Beats by Dre, yeah, is insane. Is insane. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he was like, oh yeah. I don't think he was trying to. I don't think he was trying to get an extra dig like that. I don't think so. Why would you think that he wouldn't do that? Like, that's my that's thing. next civil sadistic shit, bro. Like, Did he, I understand. I I understand. That's my but, point. Like, we we. I'm saying we had to stop being like. It's not intentional. It's not, they're like mm-hmm. it. All of it clearly is. Yeah. Why did Diddy stop this video? Who, who did he show this video to? <laughs> Is he is he watching his own highlights? Like, what? Yeah, it's, you know what I'm saying. So it's like, him and video makes no sense. There's no explanation for it to make sense. Yeah, the same this way it's like exist calling anymore. it beats by Dre. It's like it's not like these weren't public things. Like mm-hmm. people knew that Dre had done these things. Yeah. So you would think that they would have said Dr. Dre. Yeah, maybe any, a different name. Anything else other than beats? Yeah. So to me, I think it's all intentional. Okay. I don't trust none of them. Okay. And neither should you. All right. And I need, I need Tiger. I need some explanations on the Tiger situation. I just, I, 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 I'm putting that out. I want to be. I'm gonna put it out there. Tiger, Travis there. Scott could be in there. There's the, a bunch of them. The, I had Travis Scott, but mm. the Tiger one specifically because it was public, it was visible, and it they was were, all. They were all public. Jay Z and Beyonce was public. And it was all known. Travis Scott was okay. public. They're, they're all public. So I'm just putting it out there. Is it because it's Kylie Jenner and she's like I one of the great whites? I don't give a shit about Kylie Jenner. Okay. I, could not, I could not give a <laughs> single fuck about Kylie Jenner. The, I don't. The Kardashian family. Mm-hmm. I just, I cannot imagine why we ever allowed this to become a thing. <laughs> okay. Just in general. So for anybody to even say that, mm-hmm. oh, you're doing this for Kylie Jenner. I don't give a single 
fuck. It's well, How about we, Kylie, Kylie Jenner. We got we got to thank Ray J. Ray J made it all possible. Right. Okay, last but not least, before we sign out, J, the rumor is that Jay Z is up next, and everyone's saying Jay Z is going to be the next one on the podium. What are your thoughts on that? How do you feel about that? I think I think Diddy's tough to stomach for a lot of people. I think Jay Z will be the hardest one for yeah everyone to like really stomach. Yeah, well, I would say <clears throat> the thing with Jay Z is that uh, when he met Beyonce, she was like. 18, 17, something like 17, that. 17, yeah. So I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked by a Jay-Z, a Jay-Z situation. There, I would not be shocked by that. There's, there's, more, there's more than that, but you're saying you wouldn't be shocked. Like, you could you could see it happening. I could see it happening just because, first, there was that, and then there was the situation with him and Beyonce and Solange inside the elevator. That, oh, my gosh. That we, we've just, people have just, it's just fallen in the memory hole. People are not talking, don't mention that anymore. So... That uh, any sort of relationship <laughs> dynamic with Jay Z and Beyonce Solange, that the 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 Carter Knowles situation, mm-hmm. that's that isn't as copacetic as it appears. Well, the, the the rumor, well, two rumors I would say. One is that Dame and Jay were well known in the industry for having underage girls around mm-hmm. during the early Rockefeller days, allegedly. Um, allegedly. Mm-hmm. And the second one is that Jay Z had one of his flings murdered. Allegedly. Um, before Becky with the good hair. Yeah, allegedly. I will say this, because, and it's crazy I'd say it's because I've seen other artists not do this, but I want to applaud Jay-Z for not putting hands on Solange in that elevator. I don't we, think, there's no applause rec- required well, for that. I, well, there's I'm going to say that because I've seen other rappers not do that. I'm not applauding that. I'm not applauding him. It's fair. You a- operate like a man. <laughs> like, I, I'm not a person take, to... Take, take I'm, the beating. <laughs> I'm not a person to say that. I really aren't. I'm mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. But you gotta you gotta move like a dude. You just gotta you gotta be a man in that situation. No, you have you have to. You have so, to. So um thank you everybody for tuning into Sound Bites, the part of the album of podcast where we're talking about the music, the culture, and the legal battles that we uh encountered today. <sighs> the legal battles. The legal battles that uh, create the music culture that we have and know today. I wanna thank everybody for listening. Make sure you tune in. To the social medias, Instagram at Album Mode Pod, Twitter at Album Mode Pod, TikTok at Album Mode Pod, but YouTube always just Album Mode. Mm-hmm. Make sure you like this video, comment, subscribe. What did you think about the Diddy apology? I would love to hear what people have to say about what they think about the Diddy apology because that was genuinely one of the most tone deaf, distasteful things I think I've seen in a very long time. Like, don't even bother. Like, don't even bother. I don't even know why you bother with that. Um, so thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And, Adriel, mm-hmm. make sure you know yourself and know your worth. Later, skater.